Hello, my name is Robert Harland. I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Design and Creative Arts at Loughborough University in the United Kingdom. This paper's title is Graphic Design Studies, What Can It Be? Following in Victor Margolin's footsteps for possible answers. In this paper, Graphic Design Studies is proposed as a new way to differentiate practice in graphic design from reflection on that practice. Previous attempts to link design studies and graphic design have fallen short of arguing for graphic design studies. Consequently, these have not been explicit about how graphic design studies may contribute to better understanding the nature of graphic design practice. This has not been helped by the difficult nomenclature that confuses graphic design's relationship to and distinction from other visual practices. Victor Margolin called these narrative problems. This paper explores the potential to differentiate graphic design practice from graphic design studies. Building on Margolin's long-standing work and dissatisfaction with perpetuating the term design research in favour of adopting design and design studies, the potential for recognising a new field of graphic design studies is introduced and explored for the benefit of emerging interdisciplinary design research agendas. At the Design Research Society's 50th anniversary conference in Brighton in 2016, Dennis Dorden presented a paper on behalf of the late Victor Margolin. Entitled Design Research, What Is It, What Is It For? The paper questioned the use of the term design research in preference for adopting design and design studies to delineate more precisely the nature of the knowledge or capabilities they signify. In essence, Margolin argued that when scholars call what they do design research, this suggests a secure and clear domain. But his belief was that this is not the case. In his view, so-called design research does not have a distinctive character, is somewhat illusory, and does not designate a specific body of knowledge or a particular methodology. Hence, and in its place, design should denote producing design, while design studies should concentrate on reflecting on design as it's been practiced, is currently practiced, and how it might be practiced. Margolin is unsure about what design research is and what it's for. Inspired by Margolin's ideas, in 2019 I organised a symposium that speculated on a future for graphic design studies. I invited guest speakers, Teal Triggs and Paul Wells, to respectively explore a future for graphic design studies and what could be learned from animation studies. This is not discussed in this paper because I couldn't work out how to include it without compromising the peer review process, and I'll not dwell on it here. However, the interest in the event encouraged me to think writing this paper might be worthwhile. More information about the event can be located at the link on the screen. Margolin clearly questions the nature of design research since it has evolved from the 1960s onwards. Then, Nigel Cross tells us there were no design research journals, conferences, societies, PhD programmes or disciplinary concepts of design. However, since then, Rachel Cooper suggests design research has transformed through a series of waves that, in brief, explored its methods and theories whilst becoming a credible discipline at degree level, attracted funding and grew internationally through conferences, journals and interdisciplinarity, impacted on industry and the economy through innovation, and became more people orientated, absorbing theories from other disciplines, impacted on competitiveness and influenced other non-design disciplines. This fourth and most recent wave resembles design research as a transdisciplinary field. Throughout this period, in 2013, Margolin refers to established design practices typically identified as product design, graphic design, fashion design, transportation design, interior design, design management, and the related activities of engineering and architecture. To these, Margolin adds an abundance of new design activities such as service design, interaction design, human computer interface design, universal design, participatory design ecological design, social design, feminist design, medical design, organisation design, and numerous others. 
However, this latter group is said to have been established in a haphazard fashion, with no attention given to the theories, principles or arguments that should identify any shared assumptions, purposes or methods among these diverse activities. If Margolin is right, these newer conceptions of design do not appear to have advanced design research and reinforce his view that design research has evolved without a precise identity as an intellectual field. Hence, Margolin calls for the adoption of design studies as a framework that can most effectively integrate the multiple voices, theories, arguments and claims that have design as their subject into a course of action that can make the most productive use of them. In this pursuit, Margolin's ideas align design studies with the fourth wave of design research noted earlier. At a time when there is considerable interest in how design research can facilitate collaboration and co-creation, celebrate the uniqueness of disciplinary knowledge as well as interdisciplinary ways of working, meet the challenges in design education, understand roles, experience and expertise, as well as include multiple voices amongst other concerns, this paper explores the potential for graphic design's contribution to these debates by exploring its possible contribution to design studies in readiness for what Rachel Cooper calls the next wave of design research and its potential to change the world at all levels. In essence, this explores the usefulness of design studies as an approach to establish what can be learned for the benefit of graphic design research. The need for research in graphic design education is not new. Research has been recognised as an important addition to the education of graphic designers and in 2006 Stephen Heller considered it the next big academic challenge. This came after concerns about graphic design research at the end of the last century when it was, according to Margolin, beset by narrative problems. Twenty years on, this had not changed. For example, in the United Kingdom, the most recent National Review of Research suggested research in graphic and communication design is weak intellectually and theoretically. Conversely, there is clear evidence of scholarship that diminishes the potential for confusing narrative and directly aligns with the term graphic design. Numerous publications are available that account for the depth of practice and how it continues to evolve as a practice, build on a significant documented history, examine theory and explore critical perspectives. This sample of references access the knowledge of other disciplines to help structure thinking about graphic design, leading to an understanding that it is fundamentally interdisciplinary. Margolin's definition of design studies as a field of inquiry that addresses questions of how we make and use products in our daily lives and how we have done so in the past is useful here for what can be referred to as graphic design studies, as distinct from graphic design practice. If research in graphic design needs to discover its own subject matter, topics of investigation and methods by reflecting on graphic design practice, past, present and future, what should its focus be? If the main objective of design studies is to reflect on design as it has been practiced, is currently practiced and how it might be practiced, and the same applies to the aim of graphic design studies, it's essential to understand the nature of graphic design practice. During the second half of the 20th century, the unification of a disparate but clearly related set of practices as graphic design eventually crystallised in a succinct but limited definition in the Dictionary of Graphic Design and Designers. As the generic term for the activity of combining typography, illustration, photography and printing for the purpose of persuasion, information or instruction. This is limited because it did not recognise the work graphic designers were doing for screen-based applications in film, broadcast media and for the computer. In his historical account of design, Margolin implies graphic design emerged as a profession at the end of the 19th century from the work of commercial artists in five kinds of business. Printing and engraving houses, book and periodical and newspaper publishing, lithography and poster houses, advertising agencies and commercial art studios. This involved a range of activities or sub-disciplines 
including lettering, type design and typography, layout, poster art, illustration, the design of books and periodicals, even writing. Margolin further refers to the activity of Chicago-based independent designers such as Fred Gowdy and Will Bradley, who in the 1890s managed to establish patterns of practice that enabled them to move between various activities such as typography, layout, poster art and the design of books and periodicals. This array of activity is summarised in this listing in the left column of this table. From this interdisciplinary base, graphic design has expanded in its scope, as indicated by the practitioners, critics and researchers who have attempted to frame the practice summarised on the right-hand side of the table. Not only has the core expanded, but evolving concerns and new technologies are increasingly recognised, some as independent fields of practice. Now, we have a much better understanding of the complexity of the field through further research into the competencies, knowledge, skills and personal characteristics of graphic designers working in the creative industries. This table provides insight into what employers look for and an indication of how education and training might cater for this need. It also suggests where research might be usefully targeted to enhance professional practice. To return to Margolin's ideas about design studies, as reflection on design as it has been practiced, is currently practiced, and how it might be practiced, these insights into graphic design provide some indication of what graphic design studies might concern itself with. These portrayals of graphic design as a professional practice indicate the range of different activities undertaken in the name of graphic design. Although still overlooking some aspects of practice that one might expect to see, such as app design, they considerably extend the way graphic design practitioners and critics have previously portrayed the practice in terms of what it is and what it is for. What is clear from this is that graphic design has stood as a unifying term, first to integrate a disparate but linked set of practices, then throughout the 20th century serving a more descriptive purpose. Clearly, what graphic designers say they do and what employers require from graphic designers is not represented in the way the practice was defined in the early 1990s. It has evolved in the same way that many fields and academic disciplines do, for example, geography. Now, based on recent research into the field, any attempt to describe the field of graphic design would conform with not only the need to recognise the complexity of practice, but also its synthesising capabilities. As implied earlier, if graphic design studies should reflect on the practice of graphic design, it must stay abreast of the field of activity. As shown in these tables, this benefits from empirical research into what graphic designers and graphic design employers say graphic design is, and should not be reliant on single disciplinary perspectives. For example, it should be clear from the examples cited that graphic design is more than editorial design, visual identity design, web design, alphabet design or typography. Rather than self-declaring statements about graphic design, research into graphic design reveals the nuanced dimensions of the practice. Such approaches, as Margolin has suggested, will provide distinction between graphic design and other practices that produce visual communication to enable deeper analysis of the distinctive discourses within each practice, such as advertising, illustration and typography, and understand better how they are contextualised and recontextualised into new narratives. In conclusion, at a time when graphic design scholarship ponders its future and acknowledges that graphic design is, in the words of Teal Triggs and Leslie Atzman, co-produced with other disciplines such as geography, biology or physics, the argument for graphic design studies as a multidisciplinary domain is timely. However, the relationship between design studies and graphic design is not new. In 2006, a range of interdisciplinary perspectives on graphic design were assembled in the reader Design Studies, Theory and Research in Graphic Design, a book that may have been more appropriately called Graphic Design Studies, in that it achieves much of what is argued in this paper. However, it did not extend far enough to capture Margolin's multidisciplinary aspirations for what he referred to as a design world. Graphic design studies might help achieve that ambition. Thank you.